render. I'm gonna have a brand new secret workflow. I used to render 8K, both 8K mono and stereo video within Adobe Premiere or Adobe Media Encoder, this normal tool round trip. I'll put from Premiere first and render the horizon. Everything gonna build in inside Premiere and I'll show you exactly how so you can retain the highest quality of your video with only one time render and also cut your time in half or more than half and upload directly on platform like Visbit on YouTube so have the uncompromised 8K quality. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Today we talk about render, how to render 8K video and upload on YouTube and Facebook directly. Let's have the problem statement. So most of the time you want to upload video on YouTube, the best way is to actually render directly in Premiere using QuickTime and then go ahead and pick if you're on a PC, DNX HR. If you're on a Mac, it's ProRes and then just Mac Source which will give you the 8K render. By the way, this is the 8K stereoscopic footage shot in the Obsidian R. So super high quality 8K time K 8K stereoscopic as you see right here, over and under. That's actually what YouTube recommended on YouTube website. But the problem is, and let me show you the problem. So this is the file. I drop it in, go ahead and upload. Bam, and then I get this warning. Your video is larger than 128 gigabyte to compress your video. This is not even the 8K time 8K video I was talking about. This is actually only 6K video, but this video is 10 minutes long. So the file size of this video is 144 gigabyte, as you see right here. And YouTube's not allow anything more than 128 gigabyte to upload because that's the limit of YouTube. And YouTube never, nobody actually told you that until you actually try to upload large file size. But that's the problem. That means my 60 video cannot be longer than 10 minutes. That is a huge problem because I actually make long travel vlog, long dance video, or long just conference recording video in 6K, in 8K, in stereoscopic. Sometimes can be very long, like at least more than 15 minute long. And I need to upload on YouTube, traditional way to compress into DNX HR or ProRes is not gonna work. And now I'm on Visbit, which is a platform allow me to upload 8K to even 12K stereoscopic or monoscopic video and then display in 8K quality directly back in on VR headset. So it's a really great player to display like really high end quality. And they actually allow you to upload directly H.265, not like YouTube. YouTube only support H.264. But the problem is in Premiere, if I want to provide file for Visbit in 8K or even 12K quality in H.265, which right here, I will show you. If I hit max source, and the max out is 5.9K for no reason. So that is a max quality, but my file size is 8K and I want to upload 8K for Visbit because I cannot leave the true power of Visbit to display my video to the highest capture quality and the intent quality I want to show to my viewer. So this is huge workflow breakdown problem. So that's the reason why we need a way to render X.264 or H.265 in whatever the original file size is. For me, Obsidian is 8K times 8K, but if a shot with the E-Halo, sometimes I want to go up to 12K. So because of this limitation, I make the first original tutorial to teach you how to render with FFmpeg and Horizon. Well, the benefit to using FFmpeg and Horizon, it generates X.264 or H.265 directly with a very small file size. And then if you upload that on YouTube, on Visbit, you're gonna save you a ton of bandwidth. As you see the comparison right here for X.264, Running Horizon is only 14 gigabyte compared to the original DNX HR is 144 gigabyte. That's a huge file size reduction, but there is a drawback to using FFmpeg or Horizon. First one is very unreliable rendering performance. 
sometimes it just crash during the middle of render. This is actually one of the biggest complaints of my original tutorial from my viewer. They just told me that, hey, the render just crashed in the middle of the night and something just happened and crash. It never generate the actual file I need. Well, guys, this is a free software by open source developer. So the software is not reliable because it's just free. And that's one problem. But the biggest drawback though is actually double rendering. So the image quality is reduced during the second render because in order to use Horizon and FFmpeg, you actually need to first render DNX HR or ProRes if you're on a Mac in Premiere or Media Encoder and then you actually need to drop into FFmpeg or Horizon to render second time to turn into X264 or H.265 and then upload on YouTube and Visbit. So the second render will reduce your image quality, which is also I don't want to. Especially people like myself live in West Coast in the United States, we generally have really, really fast upload speed. So upload time is not even an issue for us. It's mostly the limits file size from YouTube and Visbit is a problem for us. So using FFmpeg or Horizon doesn't give us any advantage at all. So that's why I go on to the second journey to find you guys the best rendering and upload workflow so you can actually upload 6K, 8K, or even 12K stereoscopic 600 megabyte per second video directly up on YouTube or Visbit. So the reason why I come across this solution is actually while I'm doing a gig for Red Bull, and Red Bull as a client has some really like unreasonable demand said that I need to deliver ProRes file for archiving purpose. Again, if you're working in the 360 world in 8K and above resolution, this project is actually shot on the Insta360 Pro. It's an 8K file size. You cannot actually using any Mac machine to edit the video or render the final output. So this entire thing is actually done in PC with a really fast machine. But now Red Bull wanted ProRes to deliver. I cannot generate ProRes on a PC. So what should I do? That's that's how I come across this little After Effect plugin called After Codex. So After Codex allow you to render ProRes and different favorite of ProRes directly in PC in After Effect, Premiere Pro, or even Media Encoder. So that's actually solved my problem. So now I can have a unified workflow in between my Mac, which is I just got my brand new MacBook Pro, so I can do a quick rough stitch and rough cut doing our onset with my obsidians and I can preview that to the di director or the producer and then transfer the same ProRes file into my PC and continue my edit. So after Codex provide me a unified Codex workflow using ProRes and in the future when ProRes Raw come out, I can also leverage ProRes Raw with after Codex. But the true power is not only on you can rendering ProRes on PC. The true power is you can actually replace your entire rendering pipeline with after codex to generate huge, huge size X264 or H265 file and upload directly on YouTube with really, really fast rendering time and faster than Adobe Premiere or Media Encoder. By the way, I'm not associated with AE script or after codex. As I said, I just randomly Google and I found this solution and, and I just play around and discover this hidden feature of this plugin to allow me to do amazing thing to solve my problem of uploading and rendering issue. So let me show you how. First, go ahead and download After Codex and install that using AE Script Manager. So you can install that in After Effect, Premiere, and Media Encoder. You don't necessarily need all three of them. I will usually just get the Premiere Pro one or the Media Encoder one. And here is my final edit of my recent music video, which shot on the Obsidian R, which is an 8K time 8K stereoscopic music video in 30 frames per second and really, really big file. So I go ahead at export media inside Adobe Premiere. And in here, as you see, I can pick after codex. After you install that, it will actually show up. And then after I pick after codex, it will show up this special panel right here. I will show you, you can actually render ProRes. So let me just pick .mov and open the after codex setting. Right here, as you see, you can actually pick ProRes on ProRes, all the ProRes favor. So if you want to render ProRes, I would suggest just go to the standard right here. And then you can go ahead and render ProRes within the PC. 
But what I really want to show you is actually the final rendering process. So let's say that why now you finish your edit, you want to upload this 8K time 8K stereoscopic video up on YouTube and YouTube only support H.264. So that's what you're going to pick is the MP4 container. Go open after codec and in here, go ahead and pick H.264. By the way, if you're just rendering like traditional 2D video, that's actually a really good preset for you. It actually faster than regular media encoder or premiere by 30% of rendering time. So if you make a lot of YouTube tutorial or beauty vlogger video, that's a great setting you choose. But most of the people watching this video is not a beauty vlogger. So go ahead and pick the H.264, which give you the most amount of option. And then the default setting usually in quality, but I will usually pick bitrate because I want to know my bitrate of my video. So this is 8K time 8K. So if just an 8K monoscopic, I usually to put 200 megabyte, 200 megabyte per seconds. But if you have an 8K time 8K stereoscopic video, I will max it out to 400 megabyte per second. Here's a great little slider that really specially for you. If you're on a time crunch, you just want to do a quick render and see what it looked like in the final result. You can crank this slider to really, really fast. So the rendering speed will be really, really fast. What it gives you is a less compressed video. So the files are still very big. And then in the final render, you will usually, I will usually pick five is the best option because it give me a pretty fast render and also a decent small file size so I can upload on YouTube or Visbit. And here I usually pick high auto profile and then on the setting, I just leave it as a default. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. In share, make sure you click Match Source. And as you see, the output setting right now is 8K time 8K. So it's exactly the same as the source, frame rate, and everything. And then, depend on you, you can check this checkbox so using maximize render quality. Or if you don't want to waste too much time, you don't need to really check that. And just go ahead and hit Export. If you queue that, so make sure you have the Adobe media encoder license as well because it's not going to render in media encoder that's because different license for do that but if you only have the premiere one you can just go ahead and hit export okay now what about you want to render it for player like this bit which support h.265 as i demoed before if you're using the h.265 come with the adobe premiere you max out in 5.9k so again i can use after codec and open after codec setting and in here, as you see, I can pick H.264 and HEVC right here, X265. Pick that. And as the same, I will actually go ahead and pick bitrate. Again, max out in 400 megabytes per second. Five is good. And then rest is default. And then go ahead and hit render. So now I get an even smaller file size, X.265, and then upload on platform like Visbit for even faster upload speed. Okay, by the way, after you render, don't just directly upload on YouTube. You can directly upload this file on Visbit and Visbit will know this is the stereoscopic video file, but this is not gonna work if you upload directly on YouTube. As always, when you upload on YouTube, you wanna use the last step, which is the meta injector, which I'll show you right now. So you will open this little PC app because Spatial Media Meta Injector actually by Google itself and make sure that you check this tube out which is 360 video and stereoscopic and open and inject that is a really fast process it's not really a render just a meta injection so it's not you're not gonna lose any video quality and then you upload on YouTube and everything will work beautifully and I will actually show you the link of my 8k time 8k upload on YouTube so you can check out the quality so hopefully you like this tutorial I try to give you as much background as possible why you want to spend so much time and effort on rendering and why this is the most important step to me in the entire AK workflow because all your hard work actually come into your final render. If you render half the resolution of what you shot at, why even bother shot AK? You can just shot AK with way less of money and way less of budget. So that's why I think that rendering is the process that everybody try to ignore and try to not spend much time on it. But to me, this is actually the most important process. So. Make sure you render the highest quality possible and upload that on platform and have a really, really smooth AK playback. Well, the next tutorial I actually gonna teach you that upload process and playback process to upload on Visbit so you can have uncompromised AK resolution playback on device like the Vive Focus or even just your Samsung S8 or S9. Don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumb up and I will see you next time.